As you can see, I've already created the structure and projected the textures from the photo. I wanted to show you what kind of detail that I'm expecting for this project. I'm going to turn off the textures by picking monochrome. And in this style, you can see the detail a little bit better. So if I orbit around, you can kind of see what I've done here. I've created the overhang, the steps. I pushed in these four windows a little bit and created this top portion of the building, okay, by using my push-pull and also this little piece here. Now, you don't need to really do anything with the bottom windows here. And this little structure in real life is much larger, so I just cut it off there. But I've also added a, a few surfaces. I just like to see them. So I just added the surfaces on the sides. I think I have a little bit in the back as well. But you do not have to do that. So our main focus is on this front area. And now I'm going to turn on the textures so we can talk about replacing the lettering here with 3D lettering or 3D text. So this technique comes in handy. So remember this for future projects, not only in class, but uh, on your own, is we're going to be making a um, unique texture. So the first thing we want to do is to create a rectangle around the area where we want to get rid of. So I'm going to increase it by quite a bit like that, and I'll show you why. I'm going to just go to here and divide it in two like that. Now this part here is what we're going to cover up, and this part here is what we're going to make the texture out of. So with your select button, select that inside portion on the right side, right click and go to make unique texture. When you do that, it'll create a texture in your material, materials folder. And all you have to do is to pick the sample paint eyedropper and select that portion there and it'll appear here. Now, I've made a few other ones, so uh, that's why it's named number five. So at that point, it's already there, and we can get rid of this. So I'm just going to erase these lines here. And this in here will be replaced by this texture. So I'm just going to select that with the paint bucket and then pick on this. And then instantly it goes away. Now, let me just show you something in case you delete something or even delete that um, texture there, or that surface rather. The lettering is actually still there. You see that? We're just covering it up. Okay. So I'm going to undo and get that back like that. And this is good. Now you can kind of see what's happening there. I had already made this before I made the video, so I kind of backtracked. So I had already done another one, but that's okay. Um, we can't really leave that line there. So what we, what we want to do is to go to the erase. And if you remember uh, long ago, we would hold down the shift button and pick on it. And that's the same thing as softening. So it, just by holding down the erase button and the shift, you can pick on those lines. We've got a little excess thing over here. I don't know what that was, so I'm just going to pick on it. Okay. So you can see that it's virtually seamless. You can't really notice it. And sometimes, depending on the texture, you might have to make a couple of different unique textures to really match it up. I can kind of see a faint line there, but um, it's not really worth trying to fix that. So now that it's clear like that, now it's time 
to place our 3D text on there. So over here is the 3D text icon. So if I pick that, you'll get this dialog box. So the first thing you want to do is to pick the font. And there's actually a Bauhaus 93 font. I'm not sure what the 93 is. Now the text is not going to be the same style, the exact same style, So, but that's close enough. And if you use something else, um, you can use one of these um, Berlin fonts here. Uh, so, but I would just choose that font right there. And this is almost like with other text uh, editors where you can align it to the left. And the fill, we want the fill checked and extruded because we want to have a little bit of thickness to it. And I'm just, I just put it at two inches right now and I put the height at 24 inches. You'll have to do some adjusting with this, but I just wanted to show you how to do this because if you just start typing Bauhaus, all caps, and then pick place, it comes in like that, and that's not what we want. So the trick here is to start typing the first letter, so we want B and then enter A, U, H, and so forth. So if you forget to spell it, it's right there. Now, if you, you don't worry about not seeing everything here. So once you've spelled out the word by typing one letter, enter, next letter, enter, so forth, then just pick place, and there it is. So roughly, we want to put it where it was before. And if you pick on face, it becomes, or rather, it comes in as a component. So if you wanted to get a little closer to that, and scale it a little bit, you can do so. Don't forget the corner grips, scale it proportionally. Okay. Now you might want to stretch them out a little bit, so I'm going to zoom in here and pick this middle grip, stretch them out this way. And they look a little fat here, the two inches was a little, so I'm going to make them a little thinner, like that. Okay, so the spacing is okay. I mean, it's not going to be exact, but that's not really the purpose of this project here. I just wanted you to get introduced to writing 3D text in that manner. Now, what I'd also like for you to do is to have it away from the building. Right now, it's on the surface. So if I zoom in, it's right against this surface here. Let me turn off the textures. So there is no gap there, but I do want a gap as if they were mounted with a post. So I'm going to turn that back on again. And if you try to move it out, okay, I turned off the axis lines. So if I go to move and select that and try to move it out in the red direction, and that, that doesn't work in the green direction. That doesn't work. You see, it's glued to that plane right there. I can go left and right. I can go up and down, but I can't go out in the, it was the green access direction. So what I would suggest is for you to take it out here and explode it because if you explode it onto this then it gets glued to that surface so i'm going to select it right click and explode it and then it's already selected i'm going to right click again on it and just make it a group it doesn't need to be a component so at that point now i can move it out anywhere i want Okay, so I'm going to move it back just where 
would normally go. And then I'm kind of get close to it, zoom in, select it, and move it out in the red direction, maybe, I don't know, two inches. Okay, so we have a gap. You can see the gap. Okay, and I want that just because that's the way it is in real life, and it casts a nice shadow. Okay. After you have completed the text, what I would do is to take the whole thing, right click, and just make it a group. Because if you move this or the text, it uh, will be separated. So now if you move the building, okay, everything goes along with it. Okay.